Okay, so let's start off by talking about how HeForge works, because it's really important to understand exactly the model it is using in order to create these incredibly precise and beautiful 3D prints. So what they do is they take a picture, say this picture, and they're going to create this actual surface that they're going to project this picture down onto, right? And when they do that, you can see that it generates an offset. So everywhere it's light up here goes higher and dark here goes lower. And so let me turn off this and let's take a look at this a little bit better. First off, it's important to understand that the amount of detail is a function of the size of these squares, of these little polygons that it uses. So it's got to create a very dense mesh. Let me show you what I'm talking about. As I make it less dense, you can see that the model becomes less precise, right? So you can see to the point where it's really just not precise at all. And the higher density, of course, the more precise it becomes. Now that we understand that, what we need to understand is that this is the actual model that it's going to use to 3D print. The difference, this model is, is expanded quite a bit. Actually, their model is probably something like, let's give it a strength of 0.2, something that's much tinier, much thinner. So if you look at this from a side view, it's just not very, it's just not very basic. It probably even is smaller than that, actually, the density. But so that, so it's very, it's not moving up significantly, but I want to, I'm going to show this in a little more exaggerated view so that we can better understand what we're doing. What Hueforge does is it takes and it creates colors and it maps the colors to the different areas on the displacement map. So as we look at this, let me go ahead and show what I'm talking about. Let's just take uh, this one right here. And you've, it's got some different colors. So you can see this is pretty much exactly how things work. So at the lowest level in our particular case here, we have black. So if we, wanna, if we want to, we can move the brown around. And you can see the same sliders in Hueforge that does this kind of thing. And then we can move the green. And right now we're having one, two, three, four, five colors. And so however many colors you, you choose to print is going to give you the amount of control that you have over all these colors and how they blend together and everything. So what Heforge does is it will stop at a certain level and it'll do a filament change. And remember that we have, in this case, we start off with black, then we go, we go next to brown, and then we go next to print the green, and then we print the red, and then we print the white. This particular example isn't taken into account the fact that filaments are actually have a transparency level. So that changes things quite a bit. In fact, if I look at, if we zoom in on this, we just go, let's take the red. And as we move the red up, and let's just go ahead and I'm going to put this into a linear mode. We're going to see as we get to, so let's move the white up too. We see that as we get to the top here, and especially if we move this like this, see the white is actually pink now. It's not white anymore. It's pink. And so by, by understanding where you're going to place that red line, and the white line, you're going to be able to affect the color above. And that's really the magic in Hueforge is it takes into account the transparency of the filament and figures out what that color is going to be above it as it prints. Okay, so that's the basics of how this works. Now let's talk about some of the issues that we're going to run into. So let's go into this. No soliciting sign. Let's just go ahead and take a look at that. So that's what this is. That's what this image is right here. Let's go ahead and turn this off. And now let's take a look at this. And also, let's just do this so that we have, and actually, Hueforge actually recognizes a transparency and a ping and will make that cut out for us. Okay, I just opened up this so we can see this image. We can see what we're talking about. So right now we have a blue star and we have these yellow stars. And if we look at this color, we can see that because the displacement map is using the luminance or the grayscale value of this image, this is the model that we're going to end up with. And as we said, that there's a transparency channel that is also honored by Heforge. The challenge is that when we start to look at these colors and we're trying to find a very tiny little spot where they're going to be different, it becomes really hard. For instance, let's go ahead and go up here. There's the blue. If, as you see, as I move down the blue, it hits here first and there the second. So let's just do it this way. Swap these over. Okay. And then let's move down the orange. So we have to basically do a very fine tuning of this, right? So I've got that. That's about what we need to do in order to get the, the orange working on this. Now, the problem comes when we go in here 
and let's just turn this back into a linear and we can see that we've got a lot of bleeding going on here and in fact the way that's going to end up looking is more and more going to be like like this like where it fades quite a bit and that's a problem and the challenge becomes especially when we actually start to reduce the size of this so let's put the strength to something like point 2 which is still quite tiny and then we just need to back up so we go to here and then we go into here and you find that it's almost impossible there's just not enough resolution to get what it is that you want so we can get it to work but it's quite the challenge uh, because we have much less dynamic range to work with and that's the same problem with heforge and keep in mind this is still much much thicker than what we're going to be printing so it becomes even more and more difficult as we go. And so the challenge is how do we make this easier to actually apply these colors? And so the way we do it is we do it by taking all these colors and spreading them out equally into a grayscale map. So we have black and white and then like a 33%, a 66%. So when we do that, we end up having a, an even amount of areas that we can target. So let's go back in. I'll show you what I'm talking about. You, know, you can see the, the difference in height between this color, which is the blue, and this color, which is the orange, is going to be difficult to access with the sliders. But if we use that grayscale, now we see the difference in heights are, are much greater, and it, then it makes it much easier to access. So let's just go and do this. And again, we'll just, there's our white, there's our orange and the blue. And just it's really doesn't, I've got a lot of room for error here. And so that's the secret behind using grayscale maps to control where these actual sliders end up with in Hueforge. Okay, so let's talk now about how Hueforge handles all this. So here's our sliders. Here's that image that we started with. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and drag these down. We have the brown in here. We've got uh, blue color which was probably here and we have an orange color or a yellow color maybe we'll stick that in here so we have our color set up and you can see it's not working correctly yet so we can start to fool around with this a little bit and we can probably get close to what we want something like that probably works although the white isn't very white but you get the idea now i, I need to mention that you need to push the smoothing all the way down while you're working in this kind of flat color mode. Keep that all the way down. That's the one setting. The rest of the settings we can play with later. But for this, I think pushing the smoothing all the way down, you can tell the difference from here and all the way here. Just it changes the brightness of the colors. And you can see that we've basically been able to get close to what we want. Now let's take the grayscale version of this. And we're going to see that the white now is much wider. The yellow is yellow. And then the blue, I can push it up a little bit. And the blue is going to be quite a bit bluer. That's showing an example of how this works nicely, but there are more difficult examples that we need to pay attention to. Let's take a look at those. Let's try another example. We know we've got brown, green, and red here. So I'm just going to grab the brown, a green, and the red, and a white. So I'm going to put all these in this, and I'm going to move them around and move the sliders around. And you'll know there's almost nothing I can do to get the green. The green can show up, but then it wipes out the white. So it's very hard to get this to work at all. In fact, it's pretty much impossible. There's, there's a way, and I'm going to show you in a second how this can be done. There's some settings over here we can change, but it's much easier if we just set these up like this and just grab the grayscale version of it and bam, it just shows up, right? So what was I talking about earlier? So if we have this and we're still trying to finagle it. One thing we can do is we can actually increase the mask's depth. I'm going to change that to three, and then I'm going to move this white all the way up, and you're going to start to see now the green is doing better. Now, what did we do? So what we did is we basically increased the depth this way. So we did this. We made it larger, and when it's larger, then we have more room now for each one of these, each one of these to display. That makes sense? gives us a little bit more dynamic range. And it's just something to, to keep in mind. If you're really having trouble hitting a color, then you can always expand the dynamic range 
by adjusting the max depth. Of course, it's going to take longer to print and you're going to add a lot more filament to it. And this is now three millimeters thick instead of two millimeters thick. But that's an interesting point. So the other thing I mentioned before is it's always a good idea probably to jack the smoothing all the way down. Watch the colors in over here as the smoothing is increased. You can see that everything blends together a lot more. Look at the whites. You can tell. So anyway, jack the smoothing all the way down. And if you need to adjust the max depth, those are the two things I'd uh, pay attention to. So next, what I want to do is talk about how do you get from a color image into a grayscale image. And I'll sh show you how you can do that fairly quickly. Also, I want to mention a few other things. First off, I'm only surmising all the details of how all this works, as I don't have any special insight into the Hue Forge development or special access to the developer. I suspect there is quite some oversimplification regarding the visualization of the displacement processes. And I'd also like to thank Alva on the Hue Forge forum for his help in solving some of this. Thanks, Alva. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to go through the workflow that you want to use when you're trying to convert something to the grayscale colors. And this is actually a pretty good example because this red and this orange are so close together, they're almost impossible to get them separated inside of Hue Forge. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go to this website called vectorizer.ai. And I'm just going to drag drop my image up on here and it's going to upload it and then it's going to process it. And what it's going to do is it's going to create a vector image of this that can be opened up as an SVG file. So here we have the original image in the vector result. And as you can see, you can look and see how much cleaner now all this is. And it, it's really a great tool. This is, I got to say, it's, imagine it's free. Let's go ahead and we want to adjust the number of colors here. So I'm going to go in here and this is showing a bunch of colors, right? That's 32 colors. That's one color, two colors, two colors. This kind of the transparency is a color, which Hue Forge won't count. So we don't need to worry about that one. There's the third color, fourth, and there's a fifth. So the five is, uh, those are the colors that I want to get right there. I'll have black and white and orange and red on here. So that's actually four colors, but this is showing the transparency. So once I get this, I select five, I hit OK, and it's going to re- process the vectorization of this particular image. Okay, now that's done. So here's our new version. This is the original bitmap. This is the new one. Once I'm done with that, I hit this download button. And I want to leave these settings pretty much as they are, except for one. I want to group, make sure I group by color. So make sure you do that. Place the shapes and cutouts in the shapes below. So let's go ahead and download that now. Okay, next, what we want to do is we want to open up Photopea. It's a free online photo editor, and this is actually the desktop version. You can go look up Photopea. Most of you probably heard of it. It's basically, <laughs> it's a Photoshop clone that runs in a browser window. So how crazy is that? So, of course, you're going to get all this uh, on the side. You get all this uh, advertising. I think you can probably pay for it and get, a, get rid of that. But what we want to do is we want to open that SVG we just downloaded. Now, what's really cool about this program and something even Photoshop can't do is when you open the SVG, it creates a separate layer for every single element. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close all these layers up, as you can see. And now I can turn them off and on and you can see what we got. Actually, I want to get an outline of this first. So I'll grab this little rectangle tool and I'll just grab this and put it right here and snap it in like that. And I'm going to, now I'm going to turn it off. And then I'm going to go and click on this magic wand tool. And I want to make sure that I sample all the layers and I'm going to click it right here. And as you, I don't know if you can see, but it's actually selects everything in the transparent area. And with this shape one selected, I'll click the little mask button and then I'll hit control I in, invert. So now when I look at this, that's what I have now. Why I put this little rectangle here, if I double click on this, I can actually change the color of that to anything I want. And since this is going to be the background, I'm going to change that to white. And I'm going to move the whole thing down to, down to the bottom, bottom, just like that. Okay, so now once that's done, I'm going to turn the rest of these off. Actually, I'll turn them all off. And I'll go ahead and look. And this one right here, this is some outlines and stuff. I'm not sure, some kind of gap stuff that might be used for printing. I don't know, but I'm going to just delete that. Then I'll go and turn this one on and I'm going to call this one white, but I don't need that because I already have this other one down here. So I'm going to 
delete that too. And this one we're going to call black. And this one, of course, is going to be orange. And this one's going to be red. Now I want to take each one of these. I'm going to convert them to a smart object. And once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and rasterize them. So I basically now have a layer that says red, right? Same here, taking that. So keep in mind, inside these folders are all just different outlines, right? They're different vector shapes. I'm going to take this, turn it on, and we'll say convert to smart object. And we'll do the same thing, rasterize. And they'll go here, take this, convert to smart object, and then rasterize. Okay, and then we can turn this on. So if we turn all these on, now we have our image that we're ready to go, but they're not grayscale yet. So how do we fix that? So the way we do that is we're going to take this rectangle again. I'm going to go on top, very top, and I'm just going to select this red, that gray, and I'm going to hold my alt button down and click between the red and this. So it's going to basically take the red color and apply that gray to it. And then I'm going to hold the alt key down. And I'm going to drag it right down below it. And now it's going to apply that gray color to the orange one. And I'm going to hold the alt key down and drag down below it. And so now we have that same gray. The black we know is zero, zero, zero. So let's just change this color to black. We're just going to move that all to black just by double clicking on that rectangle. So now we have orange and red. Let's take a look at those. Which one's darker? The red's probably a little darker. So I'm going to set that one to 33% and I'll set the orange to 66%. So now we have a white is 100%, black is zero. The orange we said was going to be 66%. Let's turn that on. And then the red is going to be darker. It's going to be 33%. So now we've created even steps. We have 100%, 0%, 33%, 66%. So they're all even. Once this is done, I can say file, export as ping, and we'll hit save on that. It's going to put it in the same folder that we were in. Now let's open up Hueforge. Okay, now that we're in Hueforge, let's go ahead and open up this image and let's take a look at it. We know we want white and black, which are already here. And then we're going to want a red color, which is the darker one. And we want an orange color, which is the lighter one. Okay, so this is what we have. And you can see that we can get there, but we just certainly can't keep, we can't get white. We can almost get white. But now once we go down to here, we can lose that black. So we have to push that up. Now this is faded. So you can see we're having quite some trouble getting there. This is about as close as we can get. Let's move the smoothing completely off. We still have this tinge. So now let's take the grayscale and drop it in and see what happens. This gets much better. So now we can adjust these a little bit more. And the white looks really good. Black looks really good. Everything looks much better now. So that's the methodology that you use to create a grayscale image. And you can play around with it and you'd be surprised the results you get even if you start with a photographic image and you convert it using the AI vectorizer tool and and then convert it to grayscales in Photopea. So thanks for watching. Come visit us on our Discord and we look forward to seeing you online. Bye.